Amen. Let me say again how good it is to see each one here this morning. And choir, I especially thank you for the singing. It sounded great. For all the specials, we had several of them this morning. They were wonderful, and I appreciate that so much. I tell you, that singing really helps you out when it comes to getting up here and preaching the Word of God. When you hear good singing, you get fired up. Amen. Amen. And you know, speaking of fired up, that's going to be our series of sermons over the next several weeks about being fired up. We're, going, we're just going to call it that, serious sermons, they're fired up. Because what, I, I, what we're going to try to get across is how important it is to be fired up for God. You know, uh, we get fired up over many different things. Isn't, isn't it fun to be around people that are exciting or people that are fired up about something? You know, people, people get fired up about all sorts of things sometimes. But you know one thing Christian people ought to be fired up about is God. Amen? And that's what we, we, we want to get across uh, in this series of messages about uh, 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 fired up. Now, the title of this message this morning is, believe it or not, it's kind of unusual, but you may have heard this expression before. That makes no sense whatsoever. That makes no sense whatsoever. Now, if you have your Bibles, we're going to read a familiar passage in just a minute. Proverbs chapter 3, or if you have your handouts, that's fine. Proverbs chapter 3, that's where our text is going to come from. But you know, the title of this message, it, it just makes no sense whatsoever. Have you ever thought about the things that just don't make sense? Let me give you a for instance. Everybody's familiar with these baby strollers, right? You know, infants. Did you know on these baby strollers that it actually says, before folding up, remove the baby? <laughs> now you got to remember, for them to put instructions on that, maybe somebody tried that somewhere down the road. Okay. Um, these flushable toilet brushes, it says on there, do not use for personal hygiene. Seriously. And it makes no sense whatsoever. Drain cleaner, this is one of my favorites. If you cannot read, don't use this product. <laughs> now think about it. If you can't read, okay, you'll, you'll figure it out. Go home and figure that one out, okay? All right. uh, a dishwasher, right? On a dishwasher, it says, do not allow your children to play in the dishwasher. I mean, it just don't make sense. Another good one is, you know these laser printer cartridges that they have? It says on there, don't eat the toner. Now, why would people have these on there? Unless maybe somebody has tried it one way or another? I mean, it just doesn't make no sense. Amen? Amen. It makes no sense whatsoever. If you have the Word of God for you this morning, or your handouts, either one, please stand and let's read Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to read the first eight verses. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 1. It says, the, My son, forget not my law, but let thy hearts keep my commandments. The length of the days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them. Everybody say bind them. Bind them. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the tables of thy heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Now here comes the familiar passages. Verse number 5, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise to thy own eyes, fear or reverence the Lord, and depart from evil. For he shall be uh, help to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Let's make our good confession. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive. The indestructible. Incorruptible. Ever living seed. Of the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is hungry. My heart is receptive. Speak, Lord. Thy servant here. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never 
be the same. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you so much. You know, it that just makes no sense whatsoever. I was thinking this past week about something. If I was to go around and ask most Christians, do you believe that the Word of God, the Bible, is useful? I believe I would have an overwhelming response. That, that, that people would say, absolutely, without a doubt, preacher, that Bible is useful for today. Amen? Amen? I think people, or Christians, would even go a step further and explain why. They say, preacher, do you understand? This is the truth. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to us. Preacher, this is, this is God's instruction booklet to us. This, this teaches us how to live. Preacher, this, this, this is so important. Not only does it teach us how to live, but it, it teaches us how to get closer to God. Can't argue with any of that. Absolutely. And then I would follow up with another question and just ask, do you study your Bible? Again, I, I think the majority of believers would be absolutely honest with this question. And they'd say, well, Brother Mike, not really. Not really. And, and they would go on and probably just add a little bit more and say, why? And I, I think the majority, again, the majority of Christian people would be honest about it. And I think they would say things like, if I told you the truth, I don't know what you would think, but preacher, it's just boring. It's just boring. When I pick up the Bible, it's not like hunting and fishing or field and stream or uh, uh, McCall's or good housekeeping or Sports Illustrated. It's not the same. Preacher, I, I just don't understand it. I mean, I don't understand all, 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 all the way it's written and all like this. It, it just doesn't make sense to me all the time. Probably the, another thing that they would say is, I just don't have time. Now, let me share with you my thoughts concerning this. And you may disagree, but that's okay. But I think if you understand what we just said, to keep it in its proper context, you would agree with me. That makes no sense whatsoever. Let me, let me explain to you. People, people say, this is the Word of God. Amen? Amen? This is God's instruction booklet for our life. This, this, this teaches us how to get closer to God. This is the absolute truth, preacher. Do you read it? Oh. Why? Don't understand it. I ain't got time. But you're so adamant about the Bible and what it is, but yet you don't have time for it. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Amen? Amen. Now, you think about it. In today's time, people talk about how important it is to have the Ten Commandments posted in the Supreme Court. At, at the courthouse, and you know the situation went through several years ago in Montgomery, and I, I agree, I think it should be posted. Uh, people, people argue that prayers need to be in school. I, I agree. <coughs> the problem I have, we only have prayers at home. A lot of times we don't even have prayers at church. A lot of times we, we don't even have, people are not even faithful in church, but yet they'll stand up and talk about how we need to post the Ten Commandments or how we need to have prayer in school. It makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, I think we all agree with that. I mean, somewhere or another, when you, when you look at what you're saying and what you're doing, in, in my book, it's just not clicking. Right. You know? So, if Christians are so fired up about God, then certainly they'd be fired up about the Word of God. Now, what I want to do today is to begin to talk about getting fired up. In other words, how do you start a fire? A fire has got to start with some kind of spark. Some, 
people are, have got a spark in their spiritual life, but that's as far as they go. It's just a spark. There's not a burning desire or a burning flame there. So what I want to do today is emphasize and support this and see if we can't ignite, see if we can't start a spark to get us started. Our text comes from Proverbs chapter 3 here. And you know the interesting part, part, the interesting part about this is it gives us the answers we need to not only get that spark, but also keep that flame burning. Not only does it give us the answer to that, it absolutely tells us why we don't have it. 